Are you ready for a new role with high pay, good work-life balance, and a lot of room for advancement? Well, if so, the best job in the US might be for you. Or it might not. We're gonna talk about it. But before we get into it, let me introduce myself. My name is Cassandra. I am a career communicator. I help you learn how to build relationships, network authentically, to further your career because we need people to have great careers. What is the best job in the US? Well, according to US News and World Reports, I always have a hard time saying that, the best job has an average median salary of $120,000, it has decent work-life balance, and it has exceptionally high levels of advancement, room for advancement. So room to get promotions, it's included in this job. So what's the best job? Uh, I don't do sound effects anymore, so I just do my own sound effects. Do, 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 do. The best job in the US, according to US News and World Reports, is software developer. Are any of us actually surprised by this? Like, I feel like anything in that kind of realm of tech with software, computer science, etc., always gets number one just because of the high pay. But according to this study, they are saying that Yes, it has an average salary of 120,000 for a software developer. The work-life balance is pretty good. Most are working about 40 hours a week. Some work 50, they said it's not unheard of. But in terms of compared to other jobs, it's doing pretty well. And then there's a lot of room for advancement and the unemployment rate is 1.5%. And I saw some other articles discuss the fact that a lot of software developers are being laid off right now from big tech companies, but they're unemployed for far shorter amounts of time than in other industry or in other job titles or roles would be. So there's that. But here's the thing. Software development includes a lot of, being a software developer includes a lot of technical skills, including coding, knowing algorithms. You have to be a massive problem solver, right? That's a lot of the job is figuring out bugs or how do we connect this to this, that sort of a thing. It is not a role for everyone. So if you love math, the technical side of things, you like spending a lot of times in extreme focus and working solely by yourself, this might be a great job for you. You do still tend to work in teams, you meet with people, but the the work itself tends, from my research, to not be collaborative. If you like that sort of thing, this might be a great job that you should look into. And fun fact, I do know people who have made massive career changes, like from completely polar opposite industries into software development because there are great coding boot camps out there and accelerated programs that if you're willing to spend a little bit of money or a lot of money depending on the program you can change careers with this within six months to a year so if if those skills sound good to you then this is a great job for you but my thing is just because something is high pay doesn't mean it's the right job for you you can't just look at the money alone and i know it talked about work-life balance etc you can't just look at those things alone when the majority of your days is spent at work. So if you don't like the actual tasks you'll be doing, I just hit the camera, sorry. If you don't like the actual tasks you'll be doing, this is not a, you, you be doing, wow. If you don't like the actual tasks you'd be doing in the role, this is not the job for you. Like, I am good at math. I don't love doing math. I don't thrive off it. The idea of coding, bores me to tears. I would be a miserable software developer. I like these lists in one sense because I like that they give us a framework of what's trending, what's popular. It might be opening your eyes to a career you hadn't thought about and maybe should now explore. But at the same time, especially having worked in colleges and universities, I saw so many students choose engineering and computer science majors just for the high salaries that were known to be had when you got out of school. The kind of, the, um, it was sort of a given that you would end up with a job at the end, right? There was there were a lot of job opportunities that were there to be had and they came with high pay. People, for those two reasons alone, chose engineering and computer science. But here's the thing. 
They hated their day to day just in college. They hated their classes. They were failing their classes. They were miserable all the time. Well, if you're miserable learning it, you're not gonna be happy doing it. So it's probably not the right move. Just because it has that nice paycheck at the end doesn't mean that's what you should do. And fun fact, there are a lot of other jobs where you can make that money too. Also, if you really dig into that US News and Rep World Report study, they show that highest salaries came from places in Silicon Valley. And so, yeah, you'd make 150,000 a year in Silicon Valley or San Francisco, but your rent would be insane. You would be living probably at what somebody making 50,000 in Wichita, Kansas can live on. So like when you talk about cost of living. So you've got to keep those things into consideration too. But really at the end of the day, you need to look at what are my skills? What are the things that I'm good at doing, that I love doing, and that I would love doing day to day to day? If it doesn't include any of those things in the job you're looking at or that major you're in, sorry, my nose is running, y'all, then it's time for us to switch, right? It's time to make a change. This isn't for us. So remember, use lists like this one as a resource and not a guide. Just because something is known as the best job on a list doesn't mean it's the best job for you, okay? So if you need help figuring out what you want to do, I have a whole playlist of videos on making career changes. I will put that right here, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.